Hey everybody, this is me, Roger Aladdin Daltrey, and today I'm doing is another exciting unboxing video for you guys. So as you as you guys are aware, yesterday was my 20th birthday, so I have so this is my first video to be uploaded during my 20s now. So I went into town yesterday and I bought Paul Simon, the complete albums collection. Now, this is a box set that came out in 2013, which was the year when many box sets came out. Like, for example, the Leo Ser box set came out that year. Yes came out that year. ZZ Top came out that year. Um, the Ramones came out that year. And so, did, and so did this one here. So, this box set contains all of Paul Simon's solo records, except for his latest one, Stranger to Stranger, and then the new one that he's bringing up shortly. So, anyway. And then... Before I get into that, this is what you get in the box. So, it says, The definitive solo career collection of one of the most powerful voices in American popular song. Paul Simon's complete 1965 to 2011 studio and live recordings on 15 CDs. 52 page book with photos and liner notes. Expanded CD reissues contain 37 bonus tracks previously released. Which is pretty cool. And then, on the back cover here, we have these albums mentioned. Then there's a bit of a write-up on the back, and it says, the Complete Albums Collection is a cultural treasure box filled with the well-known jewels and hidden gems worth discovery. It's a body of work that song by song reveals the creative path Paul Simon definitely followed as we waited for his next classic. His romances with musical genres near and far, his infatuations with a variety of formats and projects from Hollywood to Broadway, his development as a composer breaking away from traditional song forms and embracing a freer approach to verse. Treading it all together is one of the most powerful voices in American popular song. A peculiar balance of wisdom and wit, of equalence and everyday, the grand gesture and the offhand remark. So yeah, I got this box set for uh, 130 euros, so each album is just about 9 euro each, which is not bad. It's not one of the best bargains, but it's a bit expensive, but I wanted to get this because I'm a big fan of Paul Simon. And you know, you can actually take this little leaflet off as well, so I'll leave it over there. So, without further ado, let's get started. So Paul Simon is definitely one of my favourite successful solo singers, easily. He's up there with Phil Collins, Mark Knopfler and Sting. And then of course, Aladdin, because again, Aladdin is the man and always will be. The best musician, best cartoon character and TV show at the same time, he being my number one favorite TV show ever. Which is pretty cool. So when, you open, so when we open up here, it's basically a magnetic kind of box. And then, leave it like that. And inside are the CDs. Oh yes, all there ready, waiting for you to have a listen to. So where I put it, I'll leave it over there, and anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So here's the booklet, and we start off with a photo of Paul Simon in concert there. He looks very well, and then it goes through all the albums individually for you, and the track that seems to you who's on it. Like, there's Paul Simon, self-titled. And then, all right. I know I'm trying to keep the it like that because I don't want to wreck the spine. I mean, so if you're used to buying this box set, I highly recommend it. I kind of like how booklets are in the boxes due to uh, that way you can look at the details and tell you who's on it. Because when you listen to them on everywhere you go, you'll be like, who's on that song? That kind of reaction. There's, there's the Ring of Saints. I know it's very struggling and you have to use two hands to do this. There you go. So yeah, there's an awful lot of music to get through. There's an awful lot of music. So let's get started. So anyway, these are all original, apart from this first album. So this is... Paul Simon's first solo record, the Paul Simon Songbook from 1965. This is uh, the only Paul Simon solo album which doesn't sound like Paul Simon. It's very much, you know, like the demos of some Simon Garfunkel songs like I Am A Rock, Leaves Are Green, April Comes She Will, Sound Of Silence, Most Peculiar Man, He Was My Brother, Kathy's Song, Simple To Sultry Philippic, Flowers Never Ever Rain Paul and Patterns, and this is not original because the originals didn't have CBS written on the uh, 
top there was just a plain front cover and the back cover was also plain with that title there as well. But what they did was on this one they have they have the track listing there and this is actually in mono like for example here's the disc for you and it's in mono and this uh, and this and it's a bit of a similar label to some Bob Dylan Columbia albums and some uh, Blue Oyster Cult Columbia albums as well which is pretty good cool. and this album was recorded during the first uh, split up of Simon and Garfunkel because which which is a bit odd and this album was actually deleted in 1979 at Simon's request so it does kind of feel like this album is a little bit of a standalone record. Because then Paul Simon, Simon Garfunkel's famous breakup was in 1970 after the success of the magnificent Bridge Over Troubled Water. So anyway, the next album up is his second album, but what a lot of people consider to be his first album. It is self-titled Paul Simon from 1972. So uh, I love the uh, Paul Simon album covers themselves. They're brilliant. And this album has a few big hit singles on here. We have songs like Mother and Child Reunion, Duncan, and one of his biggest hit singles of all time, Me and Julio Down by the Schoolyard. And uh, when I think of the title Mother and Child Reunion, it's a bit like saying women and children, which, like for example, think of the phrase women and children first, which is an album title by Van Halen, which, which of course features the magnificent hit single, And the Cradle Will Rock. And... Uh, and also, uh, it's like saying The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, which is a song title by The Smiths from the 1984 self-titled debut, which is one of my favourite 80s debut albums of all time, along with Face Value by Phil Collins, Murmur by R.E.M., Boy From U2, and maybe Small Creep State by Mike Rutherford, or the debut album of Mike and the Mechanics. And then we have, and then with Duncan, Duncan actually uh, is like saying Duncan and Brady, which is a song titled by Bob Dylan, which he recorded in the 90s. And then with me and Hulu Down by Schoolyard, I just love the music, I love the, his vocals going, I'm on my pajama, rolled out of bed, and she ran to the police station. When her papa found out, he began to shout, and he started the investigation. Like, the way he sings it, that is one of the best songs ever of all time. Then we have a song on here called uh, Congratulations, and that is a song titled by the Travelling Wilburys from their 30th anniversary 1988 album this year, Travel Movies Volume 1, and it has one of the most magnificent Bob Dylan vocal performances ever. I mean, you have to love that song by Bob Dylan. It's just beautiful and magnificent. And maybe he, one of his, in his top five vocal performances ever of all time. And also, Congratulations is a song titled by the Rolling Stones, which comes off his, which, which just comes off the uh, Rolling Stones album, which comes off the album 12 by 5 and it's a US album, because again, the first five Rolling Stones albums I have are the US versions, because some of my favourite songs are on that album, are on those albums. Then we have another song on here called uh, Everything But Together Falls Apart, which is like saying, and then it all falls apart, which is a line in the Bruce Springsteen song, Brilliant Disguise, which comes off the magnificent 1987 record, Tunnel of Love. And Tunnel of Love is also a song title by Dire Straits from the magnificent Making Movies record, and it's also a song titled by Gene Simmons on his 1978 solo Kiss album. And everything put together falls apart is like saying Girls Keep Coming Apart, which is a song titled by Aerosmith from the 1987 record Permanent Vacation, which to me is sort of as a comeback album for them, and it was much better than the previous one, Dumb with Mirrors. But again, that doesn't mean that Dumb with Mirrors is a bad Aerosmith album. Then there's another song on here called uh, Paranoia Blues, which is like saying Talking John Birch, Paranoid Blues, which is a song title by Bob Dylan. And Paranoid is also an album title and song title by Black Sabbath. And uh, then we have Peace Like a River, which is a, which, which like a river is also mentioned in the uh, Bruce Springsteen song Hungry Heart, which uh, is from the album The River. And The River is a beautiful song, but I, but in fact, I detest the harmonica in that song, but Springsteen does a beautiful vocal on that, it's just the harmonica ruins the song for me, and it could ruin the song for all of you out there. But anyways, and then I'll just get the disc for you. The disc is uh, the same as the album cover, and this album was ranked number 268 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time. And when I think of the back cover, he actually looks a bit like uh, Neil Diamond. Leave your comment below if you think he looks like Neil Diamond. And yeah, there's a couple of other 
good songs in here as well. So yeah, that's that record for you. By all means, will it be a great album? It's going to be brilliant with me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Anyway, now we get one of the best albums ever. I love this next record. We get There Goes Ryman Simon from 1973. There's back over here. And when I think of the title, There Goes Ryman Simon, it's like saying There Goes Minji Stinchy, which is in the Aladdin, Homer, Shrek and Wallace song, Silas Stingy, sung by Shrek. And it's a bit odd because Aladdin sings most of the songs because again, Aladdin is the man and always will be. And the best musician of all time, the best cartoon character and the best TV show ever of all time. So I'll say the titles for you and then you'll be a judge. So for example, all the little kids would shout when Silas was about Money, 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 man, money, 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 man. There goes Mingy Stingy. There goes Mingy Stingy. Money, 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 man, money, money, man. And then there goes Rhyming Simon. There goes Rhyming Simon. See, do you get the idea? Leave your comment below if you think they sound very similar to each other. And this is the only Paul Simon solo record to replicate a gatefold. And uh, this has some great hits in here. We have a big hit single on here called Coda Chrome. And Coda, spelled with a K, is also the name of a character from Brother Bear, which Phil Collins did the soundtrack for. And that's why the songs that are on Brother Bear sound a lot like the songs that are on Phil Collins' Testify. Because, for example, it has one of the same titles called True My Eyes. Like, True My Eyes spelled with T-H-R-U on Testify. And it's like saying True and True which is a song titled by the Rolling Stones from 1994's Fudu Lounge, which is a great record, despite Bill Wyman not being present, because that was the first time that the Rolling Stones released an album after Bill Wyman's departure. Ron Wood should, should have left the band. And, uh, with, uh, and then Look Through My Eyes from Brother Bear. That's why, to me, the songs that are on Tarzan from Phil Collins, they actually sound like songs that are on Dancing to the Light by Phil Collins. That's why... Dance to Lie and Testify are definitely up there as my favourite Phil Collins solo albums. They're both in the top four of all his eight solo albums. And then Coda with a C is also like saying Coda, which is the end piece of a song or section. And also, it's an album titled by Led Zeppelin, released posthumously after John Bonham's death. And that was around the time when Robert Plant did the album Pictures of Eleven, which features Phil Collins on the drums. And Phil Collins at that time was doing the Hello, I Must Be Going album. And then with Chrome, you get Google Chrome, and it's like saying Heart of Chrome, which is a song titled by Kiss from 1992 record, Revenge. Featuring probably my second favourite Bruce Kulick guitar solo after the guitar solo on No 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 from uh, Crazy Nights. Because No 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 is a very Eddie Van Halen-esque kind of guitar solo, because I think Bruce Kulick tried to rip off Eddie Van Halen, which is from, you know, on Eruption from the 1978 self-titled debut. Then it's quickly followed by the third cover of The Kings You Really Got Me, which is on their 1964 self-titled debut, which is again, one of my favourite Kings albums ever. And that album actually is releasing, it's a, uh, and by the way, The Kings are actually coming back, and they're working on a new album, I think. And it's a bit odd, because they broke up in 1996. And, uh, and basically, Bruce Kulick, to me, reminds me of uh, Brian May from Queen, because to be honest with you, Brian May is my favourite member of Queen, not Freddie Mercury, and that's odd, because... Everyone's favorite member is Freddie Mercury, but the reason why I prefer Brian May is because he's the only member in the band to have long hair. I'm telling you, but even though it is impossible to replace Freddie Mercury because Freddie Mercury is one of the greatest singers ever of all time, and the way he sustains those notes, I mean, that is extraordinary talent. I mean, but don't worry, I do love Freddie Mercury as well. He is magnificent. When he died, it's like something almost died inside you almost. And it's and also uh, his death basically made nearly everybody cry because he was so brilliant and probably the nice and probably the nicest man around when whenever he was around and the fact that he's not with us anymore is just a real mensch I'm telling you he was Freddie Mercury was taken from us far far too soon and he died on the same day as Eric Carr from Kiss but Eric Carr died at forty one and Mercury died at forty five so yeah then we've another song on this album called uh, Tenderness which like saying Try Little Tenderness, which is a song title by Otis Redding, which uh, which uh, Rob Stewart covered on the Out of Order album, and it was also sung by Donkey in the original Shrek movie, because again, Shrek is the man on the bass, Wallace is the man on the, because again, Shrek is the man on the bass, Wallace is the man on the drums, 
Homer is the man on the guitar, and Aladdin is the man on vocals and of everything. Because again, Aladdin is the man and always will be. Best musician, best character and character, and best TV show ever. And then we've another song on here called uh, Take Me to the Mardi Gras, which is another big hit song on here. And Mardi Gras is Shrove Tuesday in America, and it's also an album title by Creedence Clearwater Revival. I mean, Creedence Clearwater Revival are one of the greatest bands of all time. And John Fogarty on his own is not bad either. But the problem with Mardi Gras is that there's no Tom Fogarty and Stu Cook and Doug Clifford share vocals, which was, which was good to try something new, because at least they're doing something new. But again, Mardi Gras to me is a very album, it's, it's, it's a type of album that's just like all leftover tunes. And speaking of which, here's the Mardi Gras album for you. The only albums not be part of the 40th anniversary, re anniversary remastered editions of Creedence. Anyway, that's pretty good. And then Take Me is also like saying, uh, Take Me, which is a song titled by Kiss from 1976, is Rock and Roll Over. And even Just Take Me, which is a song titled by Status Quo on the album Quo. And uh, another song in here called uh, One Man's Ceiling is Another Man's Floor, which is like saying One Man's Fool from Just One Man's Ceiling. And that's a song titled by Genesis, One Man's Fool. And it's from 1997's Calling All Stations, the one without... Phil Collins and the ones have Ray Wilson on board and you know Ray Wilson did a good job in the band but I don't know why people criticize him for joining Genesis. I wish he sang more in the band because I really do dig his voice. And uh, with One Man Singing it's like saying One Man Band by Leo Sayre from the album Just a Boy which, which Just a Boy is a song titled by Kiss from the 1981 record released from the other and again people don't like his Paul Stanley's falsetto vocals and I, and I don't know why they don't like his falsetto and the same for the older music from the elder. Speaking of which here is music from the Elder from Kiss. Very cool. Anyway, so uh, then on the B side we have a song on here called uh, Was a Sunny Day, which is like saying Sunny Day, which is a song titled by Free from 1970 record Highway. And even Waiting on a Sunny Day, which is a song titled by Bruce Springsteen from 2002's The Rising, which was in the wake of the September 11 attacks. And that was around the time when he got the E Street Band back together again. Despite the fact that they, they did appear on Tunnel of Love, but not entirely. Then there's a song on here called uh, St. Judy's Comet, which is like saying Fraley's Comet, which was Ace Fraley's band after he left Kiss, which is around the time when Kiss did Crazy Nights. Again, my favorite non-makeup Kiss album. And uh, this, of course, has another big hit single on here as well. Loves Me Like a Rock, and Like a Rock is also a song title, an album title by Bob Seger. And again, Bob Seger is a magnificent vocalist, and I'm very impressed with his new album, but again, I don't like his cover of Leonard Cohen's Democracy, which is from the future, because it's just a bad cover. And, because again, nobody can do a Leonard, because Leonard is Leonard, no one else. Like, for example, Freddie Mercury is Freddie Mercury, because... Hardly anyone these days covers Queen songs because they just can't do Freddie Mercury. And uh, with the music "Loves Me Like a Rock," it's a bit of it's, the music is very similar to the Aladdin song uh, "Single Man's a Dilemma," which is from his nineteen seventy seven record "One and the Boys." And speaking of which, I actually bought the new Aladdin solo album yesterday, and it is called "As Long as I Have You." So here it is. Because again, Aladdin is the man, the best musician, best character and character of all time. And then, so I'm just going to turn this around there and then I'll get the one of the boys record for you, just to show you. Right there. Aladdin looks kind of funny with his hair at the front and hair at the back. And then there's the back cover for you. It's a good record, this one. I do play, I do play that one a lot. And, uh... Yeah, it just, it just sounds very similar. The music is all similar to Single Man's Dilemma. And this album is celebrating its 45th anniversary this year. And then I'll just get the, uh, the disc. Same as the album cover. So that is that. And when I think of the front cover there, it looks a bit like a Catwoman mask from Batman. And even maybe what Gene Simmons would have on his Kiss makeup there. I'll just zoom it in for you so you can have a look. There you go. So anyway, yeah, that's that record for you. This will be an amazing record. I mean, hey, if any album deserves to get a lot of potential, 
There goes Ryman signing me stepping on them. That album was produced by uh, Phil Ramone, who isn't related to the Ramones, but has also produced the Bob Dylan record, Blood in the Tracks. He did us some other records as well, but Blood in the Tracks is probably his most famous produced work. But anyway, so next record up, we get uh, Paul Simon and Constant Live Rhyming. I, I know those live albums, by the way, which came out the uh, following year, because like, after every three studio albums, they would all, artists would release like a live album. So then we have this one here, and my dad actually owns this album, Paul Simon and Constant Live Rhyming. And on here, he does Duncan, Mean Hooter Down by the Schoolyard, American Tune, Mother and Child Reunion, and Looking Like a Rock, and the rest are all Simon Garfunkel songs. Which is pretty good. And then here is the disc for you. A red Columbia disc, just like Paul Simon's songbook, and some Bob Dylan uh, album discs. And also, there's the... And then there's also, uh, what, what do you call it? Oh yeah, and then some Blue Oyster Cold albums as well. See, so yeah, that's that record for you. This is, this is a good live album. Oh, sorry! I almost forgot. On There Goes Ryman Simon, on the song Looks Like Rock, the backing vocals is by a group called the Dixie Hummingbirds, and the Dixie Hummingbirds were actually a gospel group who formed in the late 1920s, and they also uh, do a good cover of Bob Dylan's City of Gold, which is from, uh, which was recorded during the uh, Save Sessions. And, and near the end of Mass Anonymous, you can hear Jack Freight, which Bob Dylan played, doing the intro line going, Things fall apart. Especially with all the neat order of rules and laws. The way we look at the world is the way we really are. See it from a fair guy and everything looks cheerful. Clap to a hard part too and you'll see plunder and murder. It's beauty, duty in the eye of the beholder. I stopped trying to figure everything out a long time ago. Like the way he says it is brilliant. The Eye of the Beholder is also an episode on the Aladdin TV show. Because again, it's the best TV show ever of all time. That's one of, the, one of my favourite episodes on this show as well. Okay, so at least we got that out of the way. So now we can move on to the next uh, Paul Simon solo record, and this is another fan favourite of his. It is... Still Crazy After All These Years, from 1975. Just back cover for you. And this album, of course, features a few hit singles. Okay, we have the title song, Still Crazy After All These Years. Then we have a song right here called My Little Town, and it actually features Art Garfunkel doing guest vocal on that. And when I think of My Little Town, it's like saying My Hometown, which is a song titled by Bruce Springsteen from the magnificent 1984 masterpiece record, Born in the USA. And then the other two hit singles are, are Gone At Last, which is like saying Gone Too Soon, a song titled by uh, Michael Jackson from 1991 record Dangerous. And Dangerous is also a song titled by Aladdin, Homer, Shrek and Mr. Incredible from the album It's Hard, written by Shrek, not Homer, that's odd because Homer is the band's songwriter. And, and I'm telling you, most of those songs are forgotten today, especially after the two records that didn't get critical acclaim as previous records. And this also has another big hit single from on here, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, which to me has one of the greatest uh, drum beats going. I mean, extraordinary talent, as does Paul Simon. And how can you have 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover? It's, like. Ways to leave your lover include you break up with them, you fall out of love, your partner dies, you have an affair with someone else, so you just leave them and not speak to them for good. That's only like five ways. And then, well, that's pretty good. And then there's another song in here called uh, Night Game, which is like saying Night Train, which is a song titled by Guns N' Roses from 1987's Appetite for Destruction, considered as America's best selling debut album. And another song in here called uh, Have a Good Time, which is, which is like saying, uh, had Me A Real Good Time, which is a song titled by The Faces from 1971's Long Player, which means LP. So that's pretty cool. Now I'll just get the disc for you. Same as the album cover. And uh, still great. And Steve Gadd appears on most Paul Simon solo albums. And on this album, the bass is by Tony Levin. And for those who don't know, Tony Levin is the bass player of Peter Gabriel's solo band. And Tony had remained with Peter Gabriel since his solo days, because they both got well together. And Tony had also performed at King Crimson as well, which is cool. So anyway, that's the record for you. This will be an amazing record. So then the period between 1976 and 1979 was a bit of a gap. However, he did have Slip Sliding Away, which is a big hit single for him. And it's like saying Slipping and Sliding, which is a song titled by Little Richard. And it's also the opening few words of the Bob Dylan song, One More Weekend, which uh, 
is on Nice and Seventies New Morning, and also uh, One More Weekend. It's like saying One More Night by Bob Dylan on National Skyline, and also like saying One More Night by Phil Collins from 1985's No Jacket Required. And then, like saying also Slip Sliding as well, which is a song titled by uh, Booker T and the MGs, which is from 1994, so that's the way it should be, featuring Steve Jordan on the drums. And those of you who don't know, Steve Jordan toured with Eric Clapton, and he also played on Bruce Springsteen's Devils and Dust, Cat Stevens' Back to Earth, and Neil Young's Landing on Water. And also between 1976 and 1979, Tin Lizzy were the only band to be accepted by the punk during the punk era, and I don't know why. Tin Lizzy can't be accepted anywhere, because as most of you guys are aware, I had given up on Tin Lizzy two years ago, but again, it doesn't mean I don't love some of their music. But anyway, so then, we now enter the 1980s, and we get a movie soundtrack as well. It is One Trick Pony from 1980. And then there's the back cover for you. And uh, this album, of course, and by the way, on the back cover, he looks very serious. He looks so serious there. And so serious is also a song titled by uh, Electric Light Orchestra from the album The Balance of Power, which was like saying Race to the Tower of Power, which is an episode on the Backyard Against TV show. A show that we all loved when we were younger and a show that we all now miss as we got older. And the, this, of course, features a big hit single on here for him. Late in the evening, which are the opening lyrics of the uh, of the of the Eric Clapton song "Wonderful Tonight," which is from the magnificent Slow Hand record, and it has the JJ Kale cover of "Cocaine," which is from Troubadour, and also "Lay Down Sally," and a glorious version of "We're All the Way" by Don Williams, and also "May You Never" by John Martin. Then there's another song in here called uh, "That's Why God Made the Movies," which is like saying "That's Why God Made the Radio," which is an album title by the Beach Boys which is from 2012. And another song here is called Ace in the Hole, which is, which is a bit like saying uh, 30 Days in the Hole, which is an album titled by Humble Pie from the 1972 record, and my favourite Humble Pie record, Smokin'. And it's kind of like saying Smoking OPs, which is an album titled by Bob Seger, which he recorded well before getting Silver Bullet Band together. And also Craig Frost, who was in the Silver Bullet Band, was in Grand Funk Railroad, I think starting with the album uh, Phoenix. And soon I'm going to be doing the Grand Funk Railroad box sets feeds in the future, so stay tuned for those videos. And another song I hear is called Long Long Day, which is like saying Long Long Long, which is a song titled by The Beatles, which is from the 1968 The Beatles White Album, celebrating its 50th anniversary this year, as well as the 55th anniversary of With The Beatles. As they both came out on the same day. And also with Long 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 Day, it's like saying Long Way, Long Long Way To Go. A song titled by Phil Collins from 1985's No Jacket Required, which features Sting as a backing vocalist. And I think after Sting was since I think so I think so basically since No Jacket Required had some big success, that was when he kind of squeezed in, ah, you know, I think I might do some solo career. I might disband the police and do my own solo career because I think Sting was so inspired of the songs on No Jacket Required, so he's kind of like, you know what? I'm gonna do my own solo career. So then he brought out the Dream of the Blue Turtles which I think is a pretty good solo record, and that's pretty good as well. And then I'll just get the disc for you. Same as the album cover, which is cool. And uh, the title, That's Why the God Made the Movies, it should be called That's Why Aladdin Made the Movies, because again, Aladdin is God, and the best man in the world, and even best musician. And if it was the female version, That's Why Goddess Made the Radio, and that's why so, so it should be called, that's why Jasmine made the movies, because again, Jasmine is the woman, and when you look at Jasmine, you've seen perfection, and then, what do you do after that? You go, oh, whereas when you look at Ignette, you go, bleh. But anyway, so that's that record for you. Then in 1981, he did the uh, reunion with Art Garfunkel at Central Park, and then it was a very successful reunion, but a very fraught one as well, because they didn't get along well together. Like, for example, Fleetwood Mac didn't get along well together, but even though they didn't get along well together, it doesn't mean they made beautiful music. And beautiful music is also a song titled by Middle of the Road, Barry Manilow. Anyways, so the next record up is from 1983, and this is when Paul Simon started to decline a bit. Um, Hearts and Bones. But it's a good cover. I love, I love the album cover. And a song in here calls it... How, a song here called uh, Al Al Allergies, which is, uh, which is basically allergic stuff in foods, like for example, nuts, wheat, soya beans, lentils, 
all those kind of all those kind of allergies. There's no song in here called uh, Tink Too Much, which is like saying it's all too much, which is a song titled by the Beatles from the Yellow Submarine soundtrack, and it's also like saying You Like Me Too Much, which is also by the Beatles on Health, and they're both sung by George Harrison. Then there's no song in here called uh, Song About the Moon, and Song About the Moon is like saying The Same Old Moon, which is a song titled by Phil Collins from the album Dancing to the Light. Then there's no song in here called uh, Train in the Distance, and the distance is an album titled by Bob Seger featuring the magnificent kick-ass tune Roll Me Away. And uh, with the title uh, Tink Too Much, it's like saying Much Too Much, a song titled by Aladdin, Homer, Shrek and Wallace on the album My Generation, with the title song My Generation being Rolling Stone's 11th greatest song of all time, and we all know that that is a fantastic track, which is cool. And then, here's the disc for you. Pretty neat disc. Okay. And then there was a three year period, because I think Paul Simon had a bit of depression at that stage, due to a lot of trouble during the 80s he had. But then he had a huge comeback, and this is a must have in your album collection. I mean, come on. When it comes to Paul Simon's solo music, nothing tops 1986's Graceland. I mean, what an album this is. I mean, The Boy in the Bubble is obviously an amazing song, and Peter Gabriel does a good cover of that on his 2010 record, Scratch My Back. The first album he did since Up from 2002, and that was a Pixar movie from 2009, and it was also the second animation movie to be nominated for Best Picture to win an Oscar for. The first one being Beauty and the Beast from 1991. And I like uh, the title song, Graceland, that's just a beautiful song, and also the Everly Brothers appear as a guest star on, the, on those songs, on, on that song even. And Graceland is also Elvis's home state. Like, for example, Texas is CZ Top's home state. And then, I Know What I Know is a really good song, but I don't like the I know what I know. I see what I see. But I love the music. And the title I Know What I Know is a bit like saying I Know What I Like in Your Wardrobe, which is a song titled by Genesis from 1973's best album, Selling England by the Pound. And, uh, I do like... The, I do like some female vocals, like I like the Bob Dylan female singers of Carolyn Dennis, Madeline Quebec, Clyde e. King and Queen Esther Morrow. They're really good singers. I think Gumboots is okay, but I love Diamonds on Souls for Shoes even more because of the Awa Awa Avatain Arena Valancha Awa Awa Bow vs. Surveillance Valancha Awa Awa Pretty good song. And then, this has my favourite Paul Simon song of all time, You Can Call Me Al. And Call Me is also a song titled by Blondie, recorded during the Audio American sessions. And even Call Me Al is also an album titled by Al Green. And then, it was also towards the end of the Aladdin movie where the Sultan agreed to let Jasmine marry whoever she wants. And then when she accepted Aladdin, she, he then was like, eh, Call Me Al. Because again, Aladdin is the man and Jasmine is the woman. And they're also both the driving force of everything. Whether, basically, when I say driving force, I mean, basically, they rule the world, especially to the heartfelt romance they've got. And I also love the flute in You Could Call Me Out. I love the bass going... Just brilliant. And Under African Skies is a pretty good song as well, and as a matter of fact, it's like saying African Nights, which is a song title by Barkley James Harris in the album Welcome to the Show, and I got... I got kind of turned off by Barkley James Harris a little bit, I think it was because uh, I was probably being slagged for having a beard like Les Holroyd. But it doesn't mean I think that they're bad, it's just something about Barbie James Harris has turned me off a little bit. But what the hey? I like Homeless as well, and Homeless is also a song titled by Leona Lewis from her 2007 record Spirit. And Spirit was the album she did after she won the X Factor, which is boring. And then there's Crazy Love Volume 2, and Crazy Love is also a song titled by Van Morrison from his 1970 record Moon Dance, and also it was also covered by Middle of the Road Michael Bublé on his album, which is an album of Crazy Love as well, by boring Michael Bublé. But again, my mom's a big fan of him, but I must admit, he's still Middle of the Road. And then I like All Around the World as well, and All Around the World is a song titled by Neil Young, from the album Life, and I thought it was a studio album, but it was a live album, so what I'm going to do is I might sell that record and replace it with a new Neil Young record in the future. And, uh, this album is number 71 on Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Albums of All Time, making this the second highest for Paul Simon after Bridge Old Trouble Water 51, if you count Simon and Garfunkel music as well. And then, here's the front cover. 
a really nice cover, same as the disc. I mean, same, same disc as the album cover. See, so yeah, that's that one. Another album to be recommended. If you haven't heard that record, I wouldn't even say go to a Paul Simon compilation. I would say go straight to that record, because that is fantastic. Anyway, so the next record up came out in 1990. It was a great follow-up record, and my dad also, also owns this record as well. The Rhythm of Saints from 1990. And there's the back cover here. And this, of course, has the hit single, The Obvious Child, which is an amazing song. And there's a song in here called uh, Further to Fly, which is like saying Learning to Fly, a song title by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, which is on the incredible Into the Great Wide Open album. And also Bob Dylan covered that in honour of his passing, which is a nice tribute, because I think Bob Dylan liked that song a lot. And Learning to Fly is also a song title by Pink Floyd from 1970, sorry, 1987's A Momentary Lapse of Reason. Or you can think of Expecting to Fly, a song titled by Buffalo Springfield on Buffalo Springfield again. And uh, another song in here called uh, She Moves On, and basically Move On is also a song titled by David Bowie from Lodger, and also a song titled by Paul Stanley on his 1978 solo Kiss album. That is my favourite of all the Kiss solo albums of 1978. And then there is another song in here called Born at the Right Time, which is uh, like saying Born in Time, a song titled by Bob Dylan from 1990's Under the Red Sky which basically had David Crosby as a guest vocalist on that and he also did the same on 2 by 2 and David Crosby also did guest vocals on two Phil Collins songs from But Seriously which again could be my favourite Phil Collins solo album I know I just do a ranking that can of course change and those two songs were That's Just The Way It Is and Another Day In Paradise and uh, Born In Time was also covered by Eric Clapton as well which is pretty neat and then here is the disc same as the album cover. And J.J. Cale appears as a guest guitar player on this record, by the way. And I think Steve Gadd is on the drums. So anyway, the next record up is his second live album, which is Paul Simon's Concert in Central Park, 1991. And then this is the gatefold, and you can see Steve Gadd is there on, is Steve Gadd's there on the drums. Anyway, so the songs he does on here are The Obvious Child, Boy in the Bubble, She Moves On, Code of Chrome, Born at the Right Time, Train in the Distance, Me and Julio, I Know What I Like, Say I, I Know What I Know, Cool Cool River, uh, Proof, The Coast, Graceland, You Can Call Me Al, Still Crazy After All These Years, Loves Me Like a Rock, Hearts and Bones, Diamonds on the Souls, and uh, Late Late in the Evening, and, the old, and all the others are Simon and Garfunkel songs. Again, it's not the same without Art Garfunkel, especially on Bridge Old Trouble Water. So here are the discs, so here is disc one of Constantential Park. And then here is disc two of Constant Central Park. So yeah, Central Park is a very big uh, concert venue and same with Wembley. So anyway, next record up is the last album of the 20th century and it is Songs from the Cape Man from 1997. That's back over here. And that was the first time that Paul Simon had explicit lyrics in his songs. And Explicit lyrics are often referred into like all the satanic rap artists because again guys don't listen to rap because it just wastes your life because they're very satanic Especially the edge of rap is very satanic and they use a lot of dirty language as well And this is actually for a musical called Songs from the Cape Man and it actually lost 11 million dollars and that's why this album was a flop And a lot of people detest this album But anyway Song in here called uh, Adios Hermanos, and Adios Hermanos is basically saying goodbye brothers in, Spa in Spanish. And then there's Sunday Afternoon, which is like saying lazy on a Sunday afternoon, which is like saying, which in Sunday Afternoon, Lazy on a Sunday Afternoon is a song titled by Queen from 1975's The Night of the Opera. And speaking of which, here's the classic album right here, along with Day of the Races being the Marx Brothers movie, because I think Queen were inspired by the Marx Brothers. And also, like Sunny Afternoon is a song titled by uh, the Kinks from Face to Face and also a song titled by Barty James Harris with a hit single like Kiev, capital city of Ukraine. Then there's a song in here called uh, Time is an Ocean and Time is an Ocean is a song titled like saying Time is a Jet Plane, a line mentioned in Bob Dylan's You're a Big Girl Now from Blood on the Tracks and also, and yes yeah, that, and then, then there's a song here called Trailways Bus which is like saying Magic Bus. A song titled by Aladdin, Homer, Shrek and Wallace just as a single and then a kick-ass cover during Live at Leeds with Aladdin's awesome harmonica solo and Wallace's amazing drum beat and Shrek's awesome bass lines and Homer's 
great guitar playing. Like those four guys are a very unique band and they're the best band in the world. And uh, here's the disc for you. Very similar album covers in Neil Young's Hawks and Doves with the star on the front. And kind of like a white star of David Bowie's Black Star with black and white. That album that he released before he tragically left us. So yeah, that's that album for you. Not many people will like this record at all. I'll find out when I listen to it. So now we have three albums left to talk about and we get the next record up is from 2000 which is You're the One from 2000 and this was considered as a comeback album for me and it was much better than uh, Sound of Cape Man and this album came out on the exact same day as the Green Day album Warning and this day last year I did the Green Day unboxing video and Green Day's Warning came out on the same day as Benjamin Orr's Death of the Cars which was the 3rd of October 2000 and he died of pancreatic cancer at age 56, I think. And it was around the time when YouTube put out their 10th album, All That You Can't Leave Behind, which was a comeback album for them, and much better than Pops. That's why, to me, Paul Simon and U2 are very similar in, in between 97 and 2000. You know, 2000 albums being a comeback, and then 1997 albums being either okay or not bad, at, or not good at all. But anyway. We have a song on here called uh, Darling Lorraine, and it's a bit like saying Darling Pretty, which is a song title by Mark Knopfler from the incredible Golden Heart album because again Mark Knopfler is a very talented guy and he is just he's just has a smooth melodic voice and he's a bit like Brian Ferry of Roxy Music both in the same league. Then there's a song in here called uh, uh, The Teacher which is a song titled by Leonard Cohen from 2004's Dear Heather and then there's a song in here called uh, Senorita with a Necklace of Tears and Senorita is the female address of Smith in Spanish and even Senor for Sir. And Senor is also a song titled by Bob Dylan from this year's 40th anniversary edition of Street Legal. And Senor is in the top 10 worst songs ever of all time, and the third worst Bob Dylan songs. The second worst is Narrow Way from Tempest, and the worst is Working Man's Blues Number 2. The three worst Bob Dylan songs ever of all time. They just suck. I don't want to ever see you guys playing those songs again. Otherwise, I'm going to give you a big kick up the arse. But anyways, then there's a song in here called uh, Pigs, Sheep and Wolves or wives, and it should have been called Pigs, Sheep and Dogs because they're all this album titles, all song titles on Pink Floyd's Animals which is a good record, one of Pink Floyd's best albums. Then another song in here called uh, Hurricane Eye which is like saying Hypnotic Eye by Tom Payne and the Heartbreakers. I forgot to mention on songs in, from the Cape Man it actually is a similar title of saying Songs of Music from She's the One by Tom Payne and the Heartbreakers and that was the first time I never bought a chronological Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers album because I only liked Tom Petty when Stan Lynch was in the band. Because after he left, I lost all interest in Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And then She's the One is also a song titled by uh, Bruce Springsteen from the magnificent Born to Run album. And She's the One is a brilliant song as well when he goes, Hey! And then the music comes in as well. And then with Hurricane on this album, Hurricane is a song titled by Bob Dylan from Desire and it's also a song titled by U2 from 1988. Rattle and hum. And Bob Dylan appears on some of these songs on this album here. Like, for example, he appears on Love Rescue Me, which is a great song. One of my favourite U2 songs of all time. And yeah, this is a pretty good record as well, and I'll get the disc for you. There's the disc for you. Same with the album cover. I think this is the last Paul Simon album to have the discs as the same as the album cover. So yeah, that's that one. And now the next record up is called... Surprise from 2006 and I like the front cover of the child on the front and to me it's a bit of a similar album cover to <laughs> Baby James Harvest where he's all looking confused going why am I in a flower pot? I'm a baby, I'm supposed to be in a pram, I'm not a flower. Same kind of album cover as well and uh, same on the back and this has of course a big hit single on here called Father and Daughter and Father and Daughter is like saying Father and Son, which is a song titled by Cat Stevens. One of his most famous songs ever, if not his most famous song ever. And also, it's a song that was in the Aladdin and the King of Thieves directed video sequel. Because again, Aladdin is the man, the best musician, best cartoon character of all time. And that sequel is pretty good, but not quite as good as the Return of Jafar, but still enjoyable at times, that one. And uh, Father and Son is like saying Father to Son. A song titled by Phil Collins from But Seriously, which again could be my favourite Phil Collins solo album. And then also Father to Son is a song titled by Queen from 1974's Queen 2. 
which is cool. And then we have a song in here called uh, Once Upon a Time There Was an Ocean. It's a bit like saying Once Upon a Time in the West, which is a song titled by Dire Straits from 1979's Communicate, with a magnificent guitar opening by Mark Knopfler going I mean, Mark Knopfler is a fabulous guitar player and I hope you all check him out because you'll love Mark Knopfler's guitar playing. He's just brilliant. And then also, Once Upon a Time are the opening words to the Bob Dylan song like Rolling Stone from Harry Six Revisited, which Rolling Stone magazine calls his best song of all time. Would I agree with that? No, but it is definitely one of the best songs of all time. And then there's a song on here called uh, That's Me, which is like saying That's Not Me, which is a song titled by uh, the Beach Boys from Pet Sounds, which Rolling Stone magazine calls his second best album after Sgt. Pepper's. Would I agree with that? No. And I don't agree with Sgt. Pepper's being the best album of all time, but it is the best Beatles album, definitely. And then there's a song in here called I Don't Believe, which is like saying I Don't Believe You, a song titled by Bob Dylan from The Other Side of Bob Dylan, which is, to me is kind of volume two of Times They Are Changing, and Al Stewart covered it as well. And then another song in here called uh, Wartime Prayers, which we take out prayers, you get war Life During Wartime, which is a song titled by Talking Heads from 1979's Fear of Music. And this album was produced by Brian Eno, who uh, was the producer for U2, Talking Heads, among others. And Brian Eno isn't a guy I'd recommend because of all the electronics he has. And he was in Roxy Music as well on the debut record with hits like Virginia Plain and For Your Pleasure with a hit like uh, Do The Strand. And Brian Eno's latest record, uh, Reflection, is only one track at 54 minutes. That's why, to me, I find it very annoying because I'm telling you, when you do albums like that, you really are asking for trouble. And Reflection is also a song title in the Disney movie Mulan, and it's also a song titled by Leo Sarah on Endless Flight, and also a song titled by Diana Ross and the Supremes. And Brian Eno also appeared on David Bowie's album Heroes, as well as Robert Fripp from King Crimson, and also Brian Eno had Phil Collins as a session musician as well, which is cool. And then here's this for you. It's like a mountain. And again, this album was from 2006. And then, finally, finishing up here with Paul Simon, here we are. This is So Beautiful or So What from 2011. So yeah, this album was released too recently, because I don't... I think this album should have been dismissed from the box. But anyways, a song in here called uh, Getting Ready for Christmas Day, and Getting Ready is also a song title, an album title by The Temptations. And then there's The Afterlife, which is like saying... Uh, Aftermath, a song, and I mean an album titled by the Rolling Stones, and also like saying Afterglow, a song titled by Genesis from 1976's Wind and Wuthering, and also by the Small Faces on Ogden Stock on Flake, which this year is the 50th anniversary of that album. And with Christmas Day there, Christmas Day is like getting ready for Christmas Day, and you can't get ready for Christmas Day now because it's far too early. And again, Christmas means a lot to you when you're a kid, because once you once you grow older, you start to grow out of it, like I did. And then the song in here called uh, Love and Hard Times. And Hard Times is also a song titled by Kiss from 1979's Dynasty, and a song titled by Status Quo on 1977's Rockin' All Over the World, which is also a song titled by John Fogarty from 1975's subtitled album. They actually covered that song, which is pretty cool. And then there's a song on here called uh, Love Is Eternal Sacred Light, and Eternal is also a song titled by Joy Division from the album Closer. And then Love Is is a song title from Aladdin on his 1992 record Rocks in the Head, because again, Aladdin is the man, the best musician of all time, and that is definitely his best album by far. Why? Because it came out in the same year as the Aladdin movie, so like the songs that are on Rocks in the Head, they could have been used for the Aladdin movie, which, which, would have, which would have smoked, and maybe have Mirror Mirror as the closing credits to the movie. Which is cool. And uh, then there's... Which is kind of cool as well. And then... Then there are some other classic ones on here as well, like Dazzling Blue, and basically Dazzling is kind of a cool uh, description to describe someone, because, for example, you uh, describe, uh, if I'm sorry, there's a line in here called So Beautiful So What, the title track, it's basically, that's how you describe Jasmine, she's so beautiful, and so what if you say she's not, because I'm telling you, if anybody out there says she's a drip, saying that she's boring, or saying that she has no personality, I'm going to go up to your house, and I'm going to give you a big kick up the arse. Because I'm going to make sure I do that if you say she is a drip. Because Jasmine is goddess and she's the woman of everything. And remember, when you look at Jasmine, you've seen perfection. And then what you do after that, you go, oh. Whereas Agneta, you go, 
or you, and you also go <coughs> like you want to throw up your leg. I, I always vomit when I think of it, Nyeza. And then here is the disc. It's like a compass of north, south, east, and west, which is cool. So that's it. That is the Paul Simon Complete Albums Collection Box Set. I hope you all enjoyed it. He is a great songwriter. And he's up there with Bob Dylan and Leonard Cohen, because Paul Simon is second to Bob Dylan of songwriting, and Leonard Cohen is close, second to Bob Dylan, but only Paul Simon in terms of influences. And you can see on the front of the box, they have the album titles mentioned, like you can see Graceland and uh, Songs and Music from she Songs from She's the One. I would say Songs from the Cape Man, even, in Surprise, and Live Rhyming, and a couple of other ones as well. So remember to subscribe to my channel, leave your comment below on what you think of Paul Simon, and then I'll see you in the forthcoming weeks or months for another video. Take care, and bye-bye. And remember to wish me a late happy birthday as well, if you're still watching the video. Oh, and have a nice day as well.